Have you ever heard of Mary Ellen Pleasant? She was an entrepreneur, financier, real estate mogul, and abolitionist who lived in the 19th century. Pleasant was arguably the first African-American self-made millionaire, coming decades before Madam C.J. Walker. In the 1890 U.S. Census, she described herself as a capitalist by profession. Her fascinating story shows how a smart black cook who was considered invisible by white people utilized financial advice she learned by eavesdropping on rich white executives she served to become a multimillionaire. This is the story of Mary Ellen Pleasant. So let's sit back, relax, and get into it. Mary Ellen Pleasant was born on August 19, 1814. There are numerous versions of her birthplace, her parents, and whether she was born free. However, Pleasant stated in interviews that she was born free on Barley Street in Philadelphia on August 19, 1814. She was allegedly born into slavery in Georgia or Virginia, according to several individuals. But Mary Ellen also stated her parents were native Hawaiians and that her mother was a free black woman. Pleasant was known as Mary Ellen Williams and she lived with Mr. and Mrs. Williams when her mother vanished when she was a young girl. She was taken from a family in Philadelphia when she was between the years of six and 11 and she later resided with the couple. She was transported to Nantucket, Massachusetts by Mr. Williams to work as a domestic or interdentured servant for the Quaker and abolitionist Hussey Gardner family. Pleasant did not have a formal education. However, Mr. Williams left enough money for her to attend school with the Husseys. According to Pleasant's autobiography, Mr. Williams transported her to Nantucket, but she had no recollection of her life before Nantucket or the motivation for being sent there. Black children were frequently fostered by individuals other than their parents during this time. In need of employment and safety, many black Americans were forced to relocate repeatedly. Some parents made the difficult choice to arrange for their children to live with other people who could provide for them with greater educational options and more stability rather than taking their children with them. One of Massachusetts' largest free black communities was located on the island of Nantucket. Segregation still existed. Although Massachusetts abolished slavery, black people were still required to live apart from white people. They each had their own neighborhoods, schools, and churches. Nantucket was in the golden period of Nantucket whaling when Pleasant arrived, about 1820. She worked in the Hussey's store as she grew up. It was managed by Mary Hussey, also known as Grandma Hussey, and was on Union Street. Hussey was the grandmother of Captain Edward W. Garner's wife, Phoebe Hussey Gardner. Pleasant concentrated on learning as much as she could from her surroundings in an effort to improve her life. She acquired a pleasant demeanor and business savvy while working at the store. By the time she moved into the house of abolitionist Phoebe Hussey Gardner and Edward Gardner in 1839, she was regarded as a part of the family. She learned to read and write through their son, Thomas Gardner. Around 1840, she moved from Nantucket. Early in her 20s, Mary Ellen relocated to Boston from Nantucket. Although little is known about her time in Boston, it is possible that she worked at a tailor shop where she first met James Smith, her husband-to-be. James was an abolitionist and a rich flower contractor. His racial background was unknown. While some said he was Cuban, others thought he was Black American. She and Smith served as slave conductors on the Underground Railroad, which they used to send slaves as far north as Canada 
and into northern states like Ohio on their way to freedom in Nova Scotia. Through their connections in Nantucket, New Bedford, and Ohio, they were able to arrange transportation. Smith worked as a representative for William Lloyd Garrison's anti-slavery journal, The Liberator. During and after her marriage, Pleasant went to Anna Gardner's Nantucket Anti-Slavery Society gatherings. After around four years of marriage, Smith passed away. After his death, Smith left Pleasant with money and instructions to carry on the project. He died in the 1840s, leaving Mary Ellen a sizable estate. For three or four years, she continued to serve as a conductor on the Underground Railroad. She was persecuted for assisting runaways, which made her profession unsafe, and she finally had to leave the East Coast. The Fugitive Slave Statute of 1793 and the subsequent Act of 1850, which included extra punishments for individuals who participated in the Underground Railroad, both put her at risk from slavers and made her liable for prosecution and jail. Many historians refer to Pleasant as the Harriet Tubman of California. Okay guys, if you like that content and you want to see more, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's get back to it. Around 1848, Mary Ellen wed John James Pleasant. Together they had a daughter they called Lizzie. Mary Ellen and John relocated to California in April 1852 during the height of the gold rush, which was between 1848 and 1855. In order to stay out of conflict with slavers for their abolitionist efforts, Mary Ellen was a household aide while John was employed as a ship chef at sea. Black Americans moved to California during this period in search of political and economic opportunities. Before 1848, California belonged to Mexico. It gained its independence as a state in 1850. The state's racial variety, which included a large number of indigenous and Mexican people, made it friendlier to black people than other regions in the U.S. However, racism still existed in California against black people. For instance, in 1852, the state enacted its own Fugitive Slave Act. Mary Ellen entered California with $15,000, which was a sizable sum of money during this time. By adopting her first husband's name, Mary Ellen was also able to pass for white and secure positions managing upscale restaurants for men. As she prepared extravagant dinners for the city's founders, she got to know most of them and benefited from the financial rumors and business agreements that were frequently discussed at the tables. For Californian miners, Miss Pleasant opened a number of restaurants, the first of which was called the Case and Heiser. Together with a teenage bank clerk named Thomas Bell, she also contributed to the development of the Bank of California. At the Bank of California, they started to generate money thanks to her advice and direction. Pleasant made savvy investments in businesses like Wells Fargo and the Bank of California, which had a significant impact on the Western economy. She also made investments in real estate, silver, gold, and quicksilver. She also started laundromats and carried on with her domestic service career. Together, they accumulated a $30 million empire by 1875. Pleasant also built a 30-room mansion for herself, Bell, and his family. Pleasant reported capitalists as her occupation in the 1890 census. Pleasant did not hide her color from other black people and was skilled at helping people who were brought in through underground railroad activities find employment. She sponsored certain individuals who went on to become significant black leaders in the city. Between 1857 and 1859, she departed San Francisco to support John Brown, who was a prominent abolitionist leader. 
She was said to have actively contributed to his mission by working and raising money. After the Harper's Ferry Armory incident, in which notable residents were apprehended and the Federal Armory and Arsenal were seized, John Brown was arrested. He had a message from Pleasant in his pocket, which was mistakenly read as WEP instead of MEP. But Mary Ellen Pleasant was never caught. Pleasant became known as the Black City Hall, and then she went back to San Francisco to carry on her work there. Pleasant publicly changed her race from white to black in the city directory during the Civil War, which alarmed numerous white people. She started a string of legal challenges to overturn regulations that forbid black people from using trolleys and other similar injustices. Pleasant helped found the Underground Railroad, earning her the status of mother of the early civil rights struggle in California. From 1857 through 1859, she provided John Brown with financial support. Pleasant filed many civil rights actions in California in the 1860s and 1870s, mostly against trolley companies, and she won most of them. Because of her fortune, Pleasant was able to donate freely to her neighborhood. She made donations to the American Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, the Black Press, and the Athenium Building, a library and gathering center for the city's black community. She didn't hesitate to call attention to wrongdoing. According to one historian, Pleasant's political and financial power resulted in the removal of a provision that prohibited black people from testifying in California courts. Her wealth diminished before her death after her business partner, Thomas Bell, died in 1892. The widow of Thomas Bell sued Pleasant for control of the multi-million dollar estate and launched a defamation campaign against Pleasant in the 1880s harming her reputation. Pleasant disliked the insulting nickname, Mammy, which local media started to call her. She never regained the reputation she lost throughout this campaign. On January the 11th, 1904, Mary Ellen Pleasant passed away and was buried in Napa, California's Tulake Cemetery. Her burial was commemorated with a metal sculpture on June the 11th, 2011. Pleasant's gravestone contains the words, she was a friend of John Brown, as she had requested before her death. Mary Ellen Pleasant Memorial Park now exists in the place of her previous home. That's all for Aggressive Intelligence. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one.